There's been a lot of conversation, a lot of questions around using push-pull procedures, how we want to do it, what's a good time to use it, when not to, and what's the alternative. So the thing we're most used to would be just a regular pull, which is what I'm doing now. Let me show you. So we're coming straight out of the liquid line. I'm doing a recovery. We're going through our machine and into our cylinder. This would be just a regular standard pull. Now, this machine does have a fantastic subcooler built into it, so I don't have an external subcooler hooked up. I don't really need one with I'm doing this. If I was using my G5 Twin, for example, I would have my external subcooler. That'd be about the only additional item you might see with a system like this. If we were doing a push-pull setup, I would have this all configured completely different. So first of all, I would come out of my liquid line straight into the liquid side of my tank I would come out of the vapor side of my tank into the recovery machine, out of the machine, into my vapor port there on the suction right there. What that is doing is that it's causing the liquid to, well actually it's starting at the tank really, it's causing a low pressure on the tank and so because the tank is at a lower pressure than the equipment, the liquid that's trapped in the liquid line is going to push into the liquid side of our tank and then we're going to constantly be pulling that vapor back off of the tank and pushing it back in the system. So the system pressure never actually reduces. We minimize the pressure differential across our pump. When you're dealing with recovery pumps, the lower you can maintain your pressure differential, the higher your flow volume will be. And so that's where you get in trouble a lot of the time. You'll see your recovery really takes a long time or starts to stall out because while your tank pressure maybe getting significantly elevated or you've pulled the system down far enough that the pressure differential across the pump is just really high and that's one of the biggest benefits push-pull provides but push-pull is for more than just recovery you can use it for charging but I'll talk about that more in a second one of the challenges to push-pull is it really requires solid columns of liquid at the refrigerant level so that means that this liquid line needs to have a full column of liquid in it if we're going to pull from here. Now, if we had a spot closer to the evaporator, or let's say the evaporator itself, if this was a flooded system, had a drain port on the bottom of it, that would be the best place to pull from. Set it up for a push-pull recovery, you're not avoiding a regular recovery that we know and we're used to. What you're doing is you're speeding up the liquid piece of the process but you still have to hook up like I am now to get the vapor portion off. Now, if you're curious, this particular machine, I've got a low charge on it. I can't even make enough liquid refrigerant to fill the liquid line to begin with. So I'm not even gonna bother with trying to pull liquid. This particular machine is very difficult to do a liquid recovery from because of how the piping is configured. It's not impossible, but it's just not easy. Add a low charge to that, it doesn't make sense for me to use a, a push-pull procedure with this machine. So that's something you got to think about as you're going through that process is this is not just a one set up and you're done kind of situation. You're going to have to hook up, change and move and make adjustments to the hoses, hoses and piping after you get it set up. And depending on your system, if you still have a lot of uh, vapor charge you need to recover and if you're in a hot environment you may still have issues with needing some sort of a subcooler in order to get the full recovery for the vapor portion of it because the hardest part of getting any recovery is getting all the liquid out of the system if you can get the liquid out you've done the majority of the work because a lot of what slows down our recovery is the fact that we've got a liquid trapped everywhere in the system. We have to boil all that liquid out of it if we're pulling from a place where there's a lot of vapor to pull from and if we can't get all the liquid out. And this is not something you would only use on large systems like what's behind me. You can uh, practice this with just regular RTUs. And so one of the ways I would do that is I could start this circuit up, get it running, and then I would try to do some form of a pump down or at minimum get as much liquid to stack in the liquid side of it as I can. So if you've got a RTU, say a 5 ton, 10 ton RTU, for example, if it's been down and it hasn't ran, but you need to do a recovery, turn it on, let it run for a few minutes. That's going to stack as much liquid as it can hold in the liquid line and then just immediately switch over and start your recovery as soon as possible. 
That way you'll get the most out of the liquid flow that you're gonna get. So then the question becomes, well, how do you know you've got all your liquid out? Because you, you're still gonna weigh your tank, but you're constantly gonna be cycling refrigerant at that point. Well, what you're looking for is when does your tank stop gaining weight? So you'll know when you've gotten as much liquid as it's gonna take is that tank's gonna increase, 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 and then it's just gonna stop and it's gonna stall right there. Once you've hit that point, you've got the liquid you're gonna get. So then you'll have to transition into a standard vapor recovery at that stage. But when it can make sense, I've had testing done, and I've got some videos back at the end of last year where I was first testing out some of the Navic stuff. And if you go watch that, you'll see that I was actually able to cut my refrigerant charging time in half. Like it literally took half the amount of time. I moved twice the amount of weight doing a push-pull charging, which when you've got a proper setup for recovery, you get the same result from my experience. You can literally move twice the volume of refrigerant that way, which is where it becomes beneficial. So if you've got hundreds of pounds you're trying to move, you can turn a 30 minute, 45 minute charge or recovery for the liquid portion of it down to 10, 15 minutes like that. So part of your thought starts to go to, well, why would you go through all the extra work because you've got to move hoses around, you got to disconnect stuff, you got to do all these extra things when you're doing a push-pull, why not just do a straight liquid recovery at that stage? You've seen me do that a lot in this channel and that is a practice I, I use routinely depending on my circumstance. That is something especially with like these York air-cooled chillers because they don't have a good liquid recovery point, I do usually do just a regular liquid pull and I don't bother with a push pull because of the extra time it takes. It doesn't make sense for me. So I bring up a fresh comment there of push pull charging. And I've seen some questions about that of why would you even push pull charge to begin with? Why not just do a straight vapor or a liquid charge like you've seen me do and I've talked about? And the answer is it, it depends on your scenario. You can save time in the right conditions. And that's something I like about push-pull charging is if I've got to move more than 100 pounds of charge, then it makes sense for me to hook it up for a push-pull because I can get that in there significantly faster. If it's less than 100 pounds, then the extra time it would take me to switch everything around and get the pump going again, kind of negates the time I might save by trying to go push-pull. So that's where just a direct charge, fine, that makes sense. And that that's where you've got to start understanding and practicing with it and trying to use it to see which situation does it make best sense for you. So now your question might be, well, how do you do a push-pull and charge? Well, it's not that complicated. Ultimately, we would change up a few things. You're gonna come from the liquid line out of there into the liquid side of your machine. Then we're gonna come out of our vapor ports into the inlet of our recovery machine and then out of the outlet into the vapor port on our recovery tank. So what we're doing is we're pulling the vapor that we have in the system, we're pushing it through our machine into the tank and pushing that liquid down to the dip tube and then forcing that liquid directly into our liquid line. Just like with push-pull recovery, this does not negate having to do a direct vapor pull. There's been plenty of times where I thought I could hook up a push-pull and after I got it set up and started to try to move the refrigerant, I got maybe a couple of pounds in the tank and then the tank stopped moving refrigerant. And I see on the scale that I just flatten off on the, on the weight. So that tells me that, okay, well, the push pull is not working. I just need to switch over. You know, if I can't make an adjustment to make it work, then I just need to stop where I'm at, switch over and do it just a direct pull. If you hadn't heard it before, you can use a recovery machine to assist in a direct charge. I highly recommend it. I do it all the time. I've done it for years. G5 Twins and even these Navic recovery machines can handle that heavy liquid without issue. The way that they do the valves internally allow the liquid to pass through without it creating so much head pressure like it would normally do in a compressor. You can't pump liquid refrigerant through a compressor, but the valves aren't designed for that. 
Whereas with these other machines, I've been able to do that consistently. Now, if you're doing a direct liquid charge using the recovery machine, you don't need a subcooler because the condenser coils alone reject heat at an efficient enough rate you're not going to end up building head pressure in the system as long as your valves are open, obviously. Doing it through the recovery machine is significantly faster and more accurate versus an alternative, okay? You know, let the vacuum of the system pull in as much charge as it can or we're going to do a suction charge on the system. There's a place for that when you're not sure about where the charge is and you're trying to get a basic estimate how much you got to put in there so that practice has a place but if that's your main practice for charging a system you're wasting a lot of time that you can save if you're willing to try a little bit different method i really hope this made sense i hope this helps in some way and maybe assist you with your recovery process or just seeing a different way of doing it we have these different methods and processes because they have their strengths and weaknesses Doing a direct pull and a direct charge is not always the strongest method. It's not always gonna give you the best results. So having an alternative where you can get better results faster can save you a lot of time, especially if you're dealing with a critical repair that you need to get back online as soon as possible. I leave it at that, MTT. Y'all take care, be safe in the summer. I'll see y'all around.